at Quiet Connections, we help people to feel more confident in their quiet and comfortable expressing themselves around others. And you're joining us today as fellow explorers. Today, Lizzie is holding the session and exploring how to get unstuck and find your flow. <laughs> so, just letting a few more people in. Hello, Esther. Um, if you want to just start by typing in the chat and saying hello and let us know where you're from. And before I hand over to Lizzie, I just want to invite you to gently stretch your comfort zone with us today. And for some of you, that might mean just showing up is a stretch, and that's great. And for others, that might be participating in the chat either through, you know, un unmuting yourself and sharing your thoughts that way. You might come on camera with us. Some of you already have, and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, you might just choose to type your comments, thoughts, and questions in the chat. So if you want to turn your camera on or off or turn your mic on and off, the button is on the lower left-hand side of your screen. Mm -hmm. And you'll find the chat button, some of you already have, down at the bottom of your screen. And if you're on mobile, it'll be under the three dots together. So this session is recorded and Stacey will be editing the session so that anyone who doesn't want their faces on the recording will, will have that edited out for you. Um, and now I'll hand over to the lovely Lizzie. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is nice to see some familiar faces there, which is really cool, and see some familiar names. I'm just saying, I'll leave it to you and Stacey, um, Hayley, to let people in as people appear in the yeah. and that's probably easier from a tech point of view, since um, those of you that know me know that I'm much more familiar with the analogue world, so with the world outside and nature rather than technology. Technology and I are often friends and often not friends, so, um, so I'm going to I do actually have slides for you today. Um, it's going to be a session that's very much about reflection. So I'm a blue health coach, um, as is Hayley, and I think there might be a couple of other blue health coaches that are either registered for this call or may even have dialed in already. Um, blue health coaching is about connecting with nature, and hence the title of this session being the art of fluidity. So being much more fluid about the way that we show up in the world so that we are um, able to deal with change and able to deal with transition, because it's a really transitional space, certainly that we're living in right now and quite often uh, people find that difficult so we tend to in terms of change grasp the certainty grasp, grasp the things that we know even if those things are quite uncomfortable uh, the familiar can sometimes be more comfortable than the idea of letting go and stripping away some of those preconceived ideas about who we are and how we show up in the world so I've got some massive topics and we've only got around an hour maybe a little bit more for a discussion so this is certainly going to be questions for you to maybe note down so if you do have a journal I would definitely say grab a journal or grab a piece of paper for you to note down the questions or watch this recording again so that you can have some deeper reflection because the questions that I'm going to ask aren't really questions that you're going to be able to answer really really quickly off the top of your head and nor would I want you to because they're the sorts of questions that require you to maybe delve into your body a little bit around how do you how do you show up and how do you experience the world around you? So they're the sorts of questions that I'm going to ask. Um, a couple of caveats. So I will be using some terms interchangeably that aren't actually interchangeable. So if you delve into deep psychology or if you go and do some work with maybe one of the QC coaches, um, those the words thought, for example, and consciousness aren't actually the same thing. But for ease and for us to have something practical and tangible to take away from this session, I might use those words interchangeably. So that's one caveat. Second caveat is I like to go off on one in terms of esoteric, deep philosophical discussions about the nature of life, the meaning of the universe and everything. So again, we're going to attempt to bring it to something quite tangible uh, that we can that we can practically apply in our day to day lives uh, and be fluid in the way that we approach that. So I'm going to stick my slides up in a minute. There is opportunity for you to chip in verbally if you like or for us to have a discussion at the end around kind of your so what, uh, your so what now what from the session in terms of what are the insights that you've made and how might they influence the way that you go about your day and think about yourself. There's a couple of big aims. I'm gonna find the button to supply my slides for a second. A couple of big aims. Uh, let me see if I can do this. You have to tell me if this, if I have got slides coming up or not in a moment let's see 
comparing slides, it says. Can you see that, everybody? Can you see some slides? Yeah, you good? Okay, so um, so I've got a couple of big aims for this session. One of the aims is that you um that you can be more fluid, that you can be more flexible in the way that you um, go about your day-to-day -day life. So that's that's hence the title. So have greater ease with yourself, if you like, rather than um, having this fixed idea about who you are. And the second one is about empowerment. So it's about being more empowered to ride the waves of change, if you like. So being able to act towards or respond to the world around you with greater empowerment. So being able to be at choice so rather than the recipient of your emotions, for example, it's about detachment. It's about detaching from our thoughts and detaching from our emotions, um, ironically, so that we can connect more deeply. So we're going to explore that concept. I don't know how much time each of you spend thinking about your thinking or thinking about your feelings. Uh, if you're having coaching with Haley or Stacey or one of the QC crew, probably quite a lot of time. Uh, but we're going to explore thinking about those things, but also not thinking about those things. So being able to spend time just simply being and connecting directly with our experiences as much as we possibly can. Um, there is a chat box for you to type in. I can't guarantee that I can catch every single question that comes up, but do feel free to type things in and then maybe at the end we'll do some sort of mop up around questions and insights in relation to that. Okay, so the art of fluidity. What is the art of fluidity, she says? Okay, I'm just going to reduce your boxes so that I can see what I'm talking about. Three areas we're going to chat, chat about. One is consciousness and thought. So really starting to think about, well, what does it mean to be conscious? And how do our thoughts impact the way that we shape our world, the way that the world appears for us, so the phenomena that we therefore pay attention to. We're going to explore emotional waves. So practical tool for you to think about tracking your emotions and noticing what your baseline is. So uh, I use a lot of water metaphors. So maybe thinking about your mean high water and your mean low water, so your average average sort of emotions that you might orientate yourself within and, um, and recognizing what that baseline is in order to act upon that information so that you can come from a place of knowing rather than simply being within that emotion, if you like. And then briefly, we're going to explore life as a shifting process or self as a shifting process. So rather, having this, rather than having the sense of I am this person, recognising that we're all evolving and flowing and changing and adapting moment to moment. And that's both from a neuroscience perspective, but also from an esoteric wisdom perspective. OK, so slides and notes. Of course, it's like it's navigating slides and notes here. It's very organized for me. Okay, consciousness. Consciousness. Um, I want you to think about consciousness for a moment and think about what it means to you. Okay, so this is opportunity to type in the chat box because I've put you know, something from my perspective, it's something we do. Uh, it's not something to be found within, it's something that we do. And I've said that our senses and our minds have a role to play in interpreting the world. Okay, but I want you to think about for you, and it's not the academic answer for what is consciousness I'm really seeking your perspective in relation to the term consciousness when you think about being conscious what does that mean for you and I will scan the chat box looking for what you're going to type up what does it mean to be conscious what are the words that bubble up when you think about consciousness being what we are more than what we do nice see so, yeah so a totality, this, this sense of a totality of what we are. Awareness, awareness, yeah, Charlie, yeah, awareness of your experience. So there's awareness comes into play within that. Awareness for Stacey, yeah. Awareness of self, so Julie, yeah, self-awareness is not rather than just other, other or world awareness, there's an awareness of ourselves within that. Yeah, in tune, I like in tune. In tune's about vibration and resonance. I like that word, being awake awake and present yeah not on autopilot Elaine yeah I mean I know Elaine is a real champion for that yeah do not wander around the world on autopilot be awake be alert be alive be present interacting with the world so yeah our perception of what it is and how it feels so it links in certainly to thought and to feeling and to the totality of our experience and um, it's a really weird one, consciousness, because philosophers disagree with neuroscientists who disagree with psychologists. And the answer around the question, if you were to 
explore looking for the answer to the question, what is consciousness? The answer is we don't really know. Uh, from any of those angles, we don't really know. Uh, it's probably, Jake, nice to see you, Jake, or nice to read you, Jake. You know, connecting with the part of you that gives space for thought and experience to be observed. Yeah, so this uh, it's often described as being like the sky, consciousness being the sky, and then you have clouds that pass through that space, and those clouds might be your thoughts and experiences, but they're very transient, whereas the consciousness is something that is there consistently in the background. And lots of neuroscientists talk about it in terms of being very digital, uh, very discrete. So it's on or off. You're at something's either in your level of consciousness or it's outside your level of consciousness. Whereas lots of philosophers explore it as being a continuum. So there's there's this gradual dialing in or a gradual dialing out. A uh, great philosopher, uh, American philosopher who uh, teaches at UC Berkeley has got this amazing analogy. And I'm going to change it from a dollar bill to goose my dog is probably the best, um, best analogy that I've used. And he says, neuroscientists have been looking for consciousness, trying to find it, trying to drill down and find it. Uh, and thanks, thanks, Julia. And, and try and find it. So they're, they're saying, well, where is, where is consciousness? Where does it exist? And by default, they've kind of explored consciousness being as in our brain. And some of us think our brain is in our head and some of us think our brain is our entire nervous system. But the way that they've approached it is they've tried to look for the magic. So they've been, they've been studying and studying the brain and studying and studying the body, looking for, well, where is this magic? Where is this value? And this American philosopher basically talks about a dollar bill, but we're talking about goose. If I was to imagine that goose, my dog, has got value, um, she's got magic in her. And I start to think, well, I need to look for where is the magic? Where is the magic within goose? Um, I could look at what, what breed of dog she is. I could look at where she comes from and her journey. I could, um, I could dissect her and say, I'm going to search for the magic within you. Where is this, where is this point of consciousness? Um, or I could look at the experiences that she creates around her. I could look at, at the entire system that operates around the connection that I have with my dog or the connection that other people have with my dog or other dogs have, because that's, the, that's what he describes as the consciousness. He says, we're looking for the consciousness in the wrong place. We're trying to dial, dial to try and find, well, where is it? Rather than ask a better question, and the better question might be, so how is it useful? You know, why, why are we conscious? What, what, for what purpose does consciousness arise? Because Delving into my dog doesn't tell me the value of my dog. Um, as blue health coaches, we can't often give out blue marbles. Again, you could do exactly the same thing. A blue marble represents our connection on the planet, nature, you know, being of value, saying thank you. Um, a blue marble's value isn't in the small piece of glass. A blue marble's value is handing it to a child who's just done a beach clean and saying, I value what you've just done. Um, because the resonance that that creates in that child's world in terms of being recognized acknowledging that what she did or he did matters is much more a collective sense of consciousness rather than it being something of value in one item so that's kind of um, a little bit deep but, but it's but it's a question to ask in terms of for what purpose consciousness and maybe that's a question for you to write down in your journal and something for you to reflect upon or work with a coach upon you know for what purpose is is your consciousness there what are you wanting to do with that light within you so little exercise for you to play with for a moment around consciousness and it's I just, I'd like you to just pause for a moment and maybe close your eyes if you're not comfortable with your video on to be fair I can't see any of you on my screen at the moment uh, but if you're not happy to do that with your video on switch your video off I just want you to close your eyes for a moment and tune into consciousness tune into the life force that is you that expands beyond you for a moment and simply check in with that for a moment and notice that and I'm gonna not speak for a second to give you an opportunity to do that
the baby's just typed up. Being aware of our presence within the world. What a beautiful, what a beautiful description. Yeah. And if you think like in terms of or if you sense rather than even think, if you sense for what purpose do you think that light or do you sense that that light might exist? What sort of ideas emerge for you? Nice, Julia, located in my gut. Anybody else feel the same? Think, uh, and that's the one to play with, Julia, I think, in terms of expanding that out. So it's, it's, it certainly is, certainly is within us and beyond us. Solar plexus. Solar plexus is really common, Charlie. That's, um, and uh, Stacey, uh, sorry, um, Haley is, uh, is also a multiple brain integration techniques coach, as am I, as is, uh, who else is on the call? That's MBIT. Um, and that's, but that's all about aligning the heart, the head and the gut and being embodied in the way that we notice sensations in us, that sense of awakeness. Pink and gold light. Nice. <laughs> Reaching out from me to the stars. So there's, so there's this, so that's something to really play with, really expanding that consciousness out. There's a beautiful exercise that you can do. And I know Ellie did some stuff for QC around nature connectedness. I haven't seen the session, but I would imagine it was around, you know, really paying attention to your environment and noticing the connections that we have with it. And there's a beautiful thing that you can do, like taking yourself to for a walk from a place of pure consciousness and simply walking and noticing when, when thoughts come in, allow them to drift back out, simply noticing. So, so this morning I went for a walk and you had the sense of all the bird song coming into you and the consciousness in terms of connection with the birds or the consciousness in connection with the ocean was a far more expanded experience of that walk than perhaps it would have been had I maybe had my earphones in or maybe been just looking at looking at the floor as I walked or even if I'd just been looking around and deciding to use my visual sense to pay attention to what was around me purely coming from a place of consciousness purely coming from a place of energy moving around a blue planet gives a very different quality to your experience so yeah first quite a good question for as a first question for a for a thursday morning what is consciousness and why for what reason do you sense sense that we are we are conscious and i think yeah we get lots of different reasons for that and essentially if we imagine that it's a life force which is ours to apply it's ours to choose in terms of how we want to how we want to apply that the point about it being collective is quite powerful when we think about something called resonance so if consciousness transcends us as individuals um, charlotte's going to explore that that's cool if consciousness transit extends beyond us and we think about everything being a wave uh, sound waves you know we hear we don't hear sound we hear the vibration of a wave of sound within us but it's also a reflection of what's going on outside really thinking about the frequency we want to resonate at is quite important. So the people that we surround ourselves with will vibrate at a certain frequency. They will have a certain resonance about them. Their consciousness will impact our consciousness and vice versa. So thinking about that system, choosing to spend our time in environments that also resonate well for us. So we are, those of us that are in Cornwall are really lucky. We have this beautiful coastline and it's really variable. So, um, I mean, actually, for, for those of you that aren't in Cornwall, just from my perspective, because I love the I love the ocean, it's very selfish. Um, I would love to know what locations help you resonate at your best in terms of coastal locations. Do you have favourite beaches, for example, that give you a sense of truly vibrating at the level that you want to? I'm going to go and I just want you to think about that for a minute. I'm going to go and plug my Mac in. <laughs> would be useful. I've got a battery warning. That would have been great you know, if the um, computer went off and you kept your eyes closed and swirled the consciousness and suddenly everything is gone, <laughs> appeared in a different world. So, yeah, are there, are there different people that you spend your time with, but are there actually locations that vibrate in a certain way 
that give you a sense of showing up most purely, most, um, yeah, most purely in terms of that direct relationship. Feel free to type in the chat box if, if you like any observations you have around place. South Coast for still, North Coast for promotion. I totally agree with you, Jake. So uh, Perrinporth, yeah, Perrinporth is amazing. I'm biased. Seaton and Branscombe Beach. So, so Charlie's got a couple of friends um, and they, they live with, they live together and they, they have a river. So their water space has shifted from ocean to river space. And there's a very different vibe in that location. And the vibe is, is the term that you, you might use for resonance. Um, and just noticing and using location to help you vibrate at a different frequency. Chapel Porth, near St Agnes. Yeah, Gadrivi, love Gadrivi. There's, there's some, and when we, even when we think about those places, because of how our, how our um, systems create consciousness, the chances are that our body shifts. Uh, Ellie, based in North Cornwall, I've always felt my home is a safe place in Cornwall. It grounds me, yeah, it's a sense of place. So really using that awareness to explore, are you resonating at the frequency that you want to resonate at? Is it, is it pure? Or are you actually closing yourself down in any way, shape or form? Because what we're looking at in this session is flow. It's about allowing us to flow with more fluidity. Mexico Towns, yeah. Mexico Towns, Mandy, although we're normally rescuing seal pups, aren't we, when we go down there, but Mexico Towns is amazing. It's a beautiful space. And the richness of the world around us gives us so many different opportunities to play with that, to play with being fluid. So I know for a fact on a turquoise day, Porthcurno is this amazing, Porthcurno Beach is this amazing bright turquoise colour. Um, I'll go there and I'll, and I'll feel really, really creative and my energy will shift purely because of the energy of the space, this consciousness within the space, Porthcurno. Um, but I can't stay there for forever because I actually come away and I'm like almost ringing. It's a um, it's a very high frequency blue versus I might go to Polly Joke or Porth, yeah, Porth, Porth Joke, which is on the north coast on a calm day. And that might help me to move into a more calm and reflective space because of that resonance that the space has. So, yeah. So make a promise to yourself, perhaps, or a commitment to yourself to play with resonance play with noticing resonance when you're around other people or noticing resonance when you are in certain locations because actually that's your consciousness coming up to meet your coming up to in your into your into your attention okay got some beautiful beaches there so even even reading about these beaches i'm like oh yeah beautiful beautiful places okay so let's um so, so let's simplify further and think about awareness um, and, and if we think about awareness in terms of our thoughts, our thoughts become patterns which become habits and those habits can sometimes be misconstrued as being part of who we are. And they are part of who we are, but they aren't the totality of who we are. So I've got a question for you right now, because there's generally stuff that's within our awareness and there's stuff that's beyond our awareness. And we have the power to both direct and expand our awareness. And we can do that through taking ourselves to different locations in order to shift our peripheral vision into a much more wide angled frame. Or we can do that through conversations that enable us to separate ourselves from our thoughts. So question for you right now. How busy is your mind? And that could be out of 10 or that could be a descriptive word. How busy is your mind right now? That could be right now, as in on this workshop, right at this very minute, or that could be right now, just thinking about this week as a whole, how busy your mind is. You've got an eight out of 10 and a four out of 10 and a seven, and they're really arbitrary numbers, but hopefully they mean something to you. And whatever numbers you might come up, so four out of 10, but has been 11 out of 10 the last couple of days. We know, we, we generally know whether we're having this busy mind state or this unbusy mind state that's allowing a space. Ah, so Elaine trying to engage and quiet, but then it surges into very busy. Yeah. So, and how busy would you like your mind to be? What is, what are the ideas that you have around perhaps productivity and how busy your mind should be in order for you to be a productive, efficient individual? Because that's, 
that's quite a useful thought to have as well. We we can have all sorts of beliefs and ideas about how busy our mind should be. And the idea that when our mind is dialing out and we're doing a lot less, that that's not necessarily as valuable as the times that our minds are busy. So Julia, five out of 10 sounds about right to me. It's the middle, isn't it? It's, the, it's a nice middle ground. It's uh, uh, Jake, seven out of 10, but less right now. Good. Um, so, and do, are you taking time out? Are you, are you each taking time out? So Elaine, yeah, I'd like to say, so I'd like to be less busy just so I can focus on one thing more. Yeah. And lots of us thrive on having lots and lots of different things going on. But actually, if we fail to take time out, so time simply doing nothing, it's actually detrimental to our creativity. It's detrimental to us being able to connect with that pure consciousness that is as somebody said right at the start, what we are, this light, this light beings of what we are. And how often do you think about your thinking? Do you think about your thinking lots? And do you take time to separate yourself from your thoughts? So I think the mindful awareness, somebody said, yeah. So um, a good activity that you can do is, is write down what thought what may, what one thought just pick pick one thought for something that's not so helpful and one thought for something that is helpful that is dominating your attention right now the act of writing it down dissociates us from it and the act of then exploring both of those things means that we're approaching our thoughts in a very balanced way uh, often what can happen when we have coaching or any support there's a talking therapy if you like is our attention is upon the stuff that's not working for us um, and we have way more attention on that quite often and if we think about that in terms of what, what we're doing when we do that is we're raising that right up into our conscious awareness and if we're unbalanced in relation to that if we're unbalanced in terms of the gratitude side of things and the progressive conversations and we're only thinking about the doom and gloom types of conversation what we're actually doing is placing our conscious attention, that light within us, in a very directed way that isn't necessarily as progressive as it would be if we used a balanced approach to go forward. So I think about my thinking. But I think I think I think more about my thinking than I think in the first place. That's beautiful, Annie. I absolutely love that. So some questions that you can use from a journaling point of view that can be quite useful to separate yourself out from your thoughts and recognize that you aren't your thoughts even though they partly shape our world is what do you think about the way that you're thinking right now and what do you feel about the way that you're thinking right now it reminds us that we're not our thoughts okay. things to play with practical tools for you to start to explore detaching yourself from your thoughts to enable you to be more fluid okay ram das well this is paraphrase from ram das says our thoughts determine the world that we live within so be careful what thoughts you entertain is is kind of the paraphrase piece of that and remembering that our thoughts evolve moment to moment so whether you uh, exploring that from a conscious energy perspective, from a philosophical or esoteric wisdom perspective, or whether you are exploring that from a neuroscience and psychology perspective, we, we do know that our mind has plasticity. We do know that our mind is evolving moment to moment. We know that every cell in our body is replaced over a seven year period. So you are certainly not the same person that you were seven years ago. You're not the same person that you were five minutes ago. Because once an idea is there, that idea has opportunity to become part of your consciousness, which then becomes part of how you show up in the world. Okay. So about um, how you think, how you think about your thinking. Yeah. How do you think about not thinking? So yeah, what do you do to not think out of interest? Um, what are the ways that you can dial out of your thinking? And this is again, this is opportunity for you to share in the chat box with the group because some of those things might be quite obvious things and so that that you might imagine lots of people have already considered but they might not be so what are the things that you do to do the opposite of thinking about your thinking to do the dialing out quietening everything being present 
allowing that consciousness to directly interface with the world. What are your top tips for that? Meditation, yeah, swimming, listening to music, dance, subtle sounds within my experience, yeah, auditory. You know, not recently, but I remember the first time I did yoga, focusing on the breathing, like a miracle. It'd be great to get back to that, Elaine, because you do a lot of yoga, so get back to that child mind of the very first time. Go for a paddle, anything out in nature, yeah, gardening, yoga, video games, audio books, swimming on my own, um, or swimming with others. You know, both of those, both of those things are opportunity and breathe. Yeah, so many things that we can do. Um, meditation, Zen, wave watching. I like to watch. Um, I like to watch waves, but I also like to watch the piece, the shoreline, the strand line, because that that's a great reminder of, of that transitional space, because everything within that space is shifting, and it it captures your attention in a really gentle way. Subre, bringing awareness to my experience in life and my body can also be awareness of contraction in my body when it comes to emotion. Yeah, just before the labelling takes me completely out of my head. We're going to get onto emotion definitely very, very soon. But um, yeah, music, I've got music art, yoga, breathing, surfing, volunteering. Volunteering is a really powerful way of getting out of our thoughts. And we, we surveyed a load of guys that work with British Divers Marine Life Rescue, and a lot of them have anxiety. And they said, when you are focused on saving a marine mammal, for example, or when somebody's out doing a beach clean, for example, your attention is in a different space and it creates that space for your consciousness to arise more, more purely, more fluidly. Charlotte, uh, going out, observing nature. Yeah. Nature is, I'd say like, if there's one message from this session, please go out and, and enjoy nature and enjoy blue space, particularly for the healing qualities that that has. And, but I am obviously biased in that. Um, sharing your thoughts with others, you know, that sense of community and connection. So QC, you know, is a, is a, about a community. This this is about a community. It's about connection. You may not be able to see people face to face right now um, in real in the real world, but it's but it's it's about recognizing that consciousness is something that is beyond you individually, and shifting yourself away from being so attached to your thoughts that you start to become part of those thoughts. Um, journaling, journaling separates you from your thoughts and acknowledges that they are only thoughts. And as I mentioned before, being balanced in your journaling is really, really important. And coaching conversations are all about keeping you progressive and keeping you um, adding, po adding positive movement to your, allowing yourself to show up more authentically in the moment, knowing that that, that you is gonna be a different you than the you of yesterday. And not thinking is really hard. So there was a great experiment done where people were asked to sit in a room for 15 minutes and do nothing. They had the opportunity to sit and do nothing or they could give themselves an electric shock. Um, and loads and loads of people chose to give themselves electric shocks throughout the 15 minutes because the idea of sitting there for 15 minutes and doing nothing was just too hard. Um, so bizarre. Uh, I can quite happily sit and do, sit for 15 minutes and do nothing. But um go and watch some waves or go and look at nature and sit and notice how many thoughts drift into your mind and how and how much of a challenge it is to actually empty our minds. But it is a practice uh, like yoga it is a practice. The more you do it, the more comfortable you become and the more you can connect with that consciousness. OK, we're going to move into affect. We're going to move into emotion now. I notice we're 40 minutes in and um, we're a third of the way in. We're more than a third. Uh, affect, affect is the word, the term used for feelings, emotions, mood, that type of thing. And again, they're not interchangeable terms, but we'll use them as that for this conversation. Um, and for me as a coach, I think improving emotional literacy is, is one of the key things that can help provoke fluidity. Having a mindful shower has helped for me recently. Yeah. And a cold water, I was going to say, Sarah Jane, yeah, a cold water shower, uh, really powerful for the nervous system. Um, and I'd say having emotional literacy is really powerful for non-certainty. So being able to recognize what's going on with our emotions, being able to lean into the bits that feel squirrely rather than run away from them and shut them down uh, is all about fluidity. Uh, we probably notice when we feel certain emotions, we hold our bodies in different ways. And um, activities such as dance, you know, Elaine, who's on this call, is your teacher's dance, being more fluid in the way that we move can certainly allow us to 
recognize how emotion arises through sensation within our bodies. I like walking on the beach. I like going in the water because again, our body is moving in a different way. Our system is, is processing the world around us for want of a better world, a word um, in a different way. And that's what our brains are doing. That's all our nervous system is doing. It's processing. It's not the consciousness. It's not who we are. It's simply a way of making sense of the world that we experience. So um, I want you to think about a emotion for you, um, a, a hopefully a, a, an emotion that is joyful or positive, an emotion that's, that's something that you, that you engage with well. And I want you to, for a moment, um, think about just have, or not even think, have a sense of that emotion within you. And I want you to maybe type um, some of the visceral qualities or so some of the qualities of that emotion that you notice. So it could be, you know, I feel when I feel joyful, it's like this, or when I feel curious, it's like this. Uh, pick any emotion that you that you sense is a positive and helpful emotion, and um, and just share with the group in terms of your in terms of your senses. So Sue says, "When I feel connected, my heart expands." That's pretty beautiful. So there's a try that on for size. You know, when you feel connected, does your heart expand? Do you get a sensation across across this part of your this middle part of your body when you feel connected? When I feel relieved, that's a good that's a great emotion. When I feel relieved, like oh thank goodness for that. My, like, I feel butterflies in, in my tummy and warm. When I feel relief. Yeah, it's like okay, that's yeah that sense of relief, visceral sensations. Our body coming up with the best way that it can of communicating to us how our consciousness has shifted. Any others? Just wait for a couple more. We just get a couple more. And I feel excited. I feel my eyes open wide and the energy flowing around my body and muscles. Yeah, and I, oh, nice to see you, Hills. Yeah, that, that's, and I can, and it's really funny because I know Hillary and I can almost see how you look, how you look when you're like that. That, that light that light within you that's like oh, excitement and that different sense of energy resonating from you um, that's palpable that you can feel that you can feel that consciousness expanding rather than contracting charlie i feel most positive loving experiences in my chest yeah chest love heart that part of your nervous system being designed or applied to connection and empathy and values and relationship and love and if you're joyful it's as if my edges move outwards that's so cool that's so cool and that's that's a great one that that would be a great exercise to play with in terms of walking around joyful and recognizing the impact that that has with others as well this um this infectious joy this resonating uh, wave of joy that is then received within somebody else's space of consciousness because we aren't this isolated these isolated beings uh, which which is great for when you feel stuck and it's, it's a reminder that we are fluid with we're, we're in flow with other people and with ourselves and then annie it's the other way around but i when i learn something interested that's interesting i feel excited and full of you know full of possibilities so you feel full of possibilities it's like carrying around these possibilities yeah. So feelings and emotions and being able to articulate them and like with thoughts, being able to detach ourselves from the sensation and recognize that the sensation is our nervous system, but the labels that we're applying come from a place of thought. They come from a place of consciousness. So being mindful of the labels that we apply to our sensations immediately frees us up from feeling at at at. Uh, effect uh, effect is the term but from feeling uh, at the mercy of our sensations because our sensations are simply our consciousness connecting and providing information it's very non-dualistic it's not good bad right wrong it's it's all information it's all connection okay so have a think about what's impacting your emotions right now um and that could be globally that could be global and we're in a global pandemic. Um, that could be Sarah. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Ellie. 
you know, it could be the fact that we're in a global pandemic that might be impacting your emotions. It could be that your work life or your home life has shifted in some way, shape or form. Um, you might be working less, you might be working more, you might be having different dynamics in the connections that you have with others. So we need to have a brief sense of what is, what is, what's in the mix, if you like, in relation to your consciousness, particularly in relation to your feelings, emotions and mood. And recognise that emotional states occur within us. They're a neurochemical response. So, so they are within our body when it comes to the state that we choose to label. And therefore, that's brilliant because that means that we have a choice on what we do about that and how we label it. Okay. So I've got um I've got a little blue health coach exercise that's that's I think is quite fun and it's a way of tracking your emotions if that's something that you want to do because you may not you know be excited about this or not so um if you're not familiar with tides uh particularly familiar with tides uh we have spring tides and we have neap tides and it's a tidal cycle over a month over over a month we have a couple of spring tides and a couple of neap tides what that means is that when the tide comes in on a spring tide the high tide is really high and the low tide is really low so you have a big movement of water on a neap tide the high tide is really low and the low tide is really low tide is really high. So you have a small movement of water. So you'll see at different times, you'll see a big difference in where the high tide comes up to, and you'll see a really big difference in where the low tide goes up to. And there are something called there's something called mean high water and mean low water. So each beach will have an average high water level and an average low water level. And our emotions are quite similar to that. So there are ways that we can track our emotions. So really simplistic journaling approach that I quite like playing with occasionally with some of my clients is for them to track their emotions. And if you see the wiggly line, there's two wiggly lines here. Uh, and those wiggly lines represent uh, joy, you know, joyfulness and happiness and not so happiness. And you can do that over a week or you could do that over a day, depending on what you want to do. So I was going to invite you to um, scribble if you've got if you've got a pen and paper and very very loosely there's no no right or wrong answer to it literally draw a line of how your emotions have been over the last since monday since monday um this week so there might have been low points there might have been high points uh, there certainly will have been both of those things whether you've registered and acknowledged them or not who knows but um i'd like you to draw, draw a line play with drawing a line in terms of how did your monday morning pan out how did your monday afternoon pan out how did your monday evening pan out very very loosely have a sense of a line and it might be something that you require more reflection for so it might not be something that you do right now but um but it's a great exercise to explore and place the line uh, on a piece of paper what what you then do is you then have a look at the line and you think okay that's that's ups and downs and it's a journey and it's flow and there and i can acknowledge where those highs are and i can acknowledge where those lows are it, enab it enables you to separate yourself from the emotion okay and you notice on here there's actually two lines so there's uh, ignoring the red lines there's a white line that's very wiggly and i played with that in terms of that being a measure of valence so that being a measure of happiness so um so it was like how happy was i versus how unhappy was i and i did a wiggle and then there's a slightly bluer line below it which was energy so that was an energy level. So you can do exactly the same thing. You can draw a line based on happiness and you can draw a line based on, so how was my energy? Uh, was my energy high energy? Was my energy low energy? And you can, it might be that those lines cross over each other. And then the red lines for me uh, might, might, might indicate a, what's my average range? What's my average range? So how is it useful? I mean, like, well, how is it useful? So imagine if I have a line and my highs are really high and my lows are really low and there's a lot of transition within that. That's going to tell me something in relation to my ability to regulate my state. That's going to tell me something in relation to um, how coherent and balanced my life is right now. And it's going to be an indicator for perhaps thinking about choices that I might want to make in terms of shifting that if that's something that I want to do. Let's also imagine that, say for example, my that white line and that blue line that I've got on this slide here were way lower down the page. 
way lower down the page. Imagine the red line stayed where they were, but those two lines were way lower down the page. And I knew that my average was I tend to I tend to drift between a seven and a seven and a nine in terms of my happiness and a seven and a nine in terms of my energy. I tend to be fairly high energy. I tend to be fairly happy most of the time. Um, but this week, perhaps my line was a lot lower than that. Maybe this week my lines were drifting between the threes and the fours. It's going to tell me, it's going to give me information that says, OK, that's that's not necessarily how I normally show up. That's not necessarily how my consciousness ordinarily might resonate or where I might like to resonate so I can do something about that. Um, and it's and it's it just a, it's a fun way of recognizing our benchmark. Thank you, Sarah Jane. It is a great exercise. It's um it's about finding your baseline. So this exercise, when done over a period of weeks and weeks, when you keep, when you keep doing this over a period of time, you find out where your baseline is. You find out, yeah, this is this tends to be me and my vibe and how I show up. And you can choose to then stay with that, or you can choose to say, do you know what? I need to go and find a bit more joy, or do you know what? I need to go and find a bit more energy, or I need to think about how I'm sleeping, or how I'm eating, or how I'm breathing, or how I'm exercising because my energy seems to be quite low. Or I need to think about the people that I'm surrounding myself with or the environments that I spend my time in because actually um, I'm not being as fluid as I'd like to be from an accessing joy perspective. If we are aiming, if, if the point of this consciousness is, is life, the point of this consciousness is to show up fully, we find out a bit more about our baseline. And baselines can be altered and it's but it is a practice it's something that we do over time it's interesting piece of research around people who win the lottery uh, people who win the lottery quite often their baseline shifts up significantly over the short term and um, because it's not necessarily because money isn't necessarily the only thing that makes us happy and i know money just pay for lots of things to, that can help help with that but what tends to happen is people who win the lottery not that long afterwards they return to their ordinary baseline so they actually return to exactly where they were in terms of their levels of happiness which is a great reminder that finance isn't the only thing that makes us happy but it also helps us recognize that when we put in uh, attention to our consciousness and how we're sharing our consciousness we can consistently move that baseline if that makes sense so two things that you're measuring on there um, and there's a different i've got a different slide that shows it as well um, yeah there's some examples of baselines you can see the top one there is you know somebody that's got a lot of shifts in mood a lot of shifts in um in, in in mood and then the second line might represent energy it represents and if you look at the first two of those if they were matched together you might say okay so somebody had high energy at the same point that they had a, a positive mood so that was a moment that they were probably quite exhilarated but there might have been other times in that person's week where they had very high energy but a negative mood, uh, which is, you know, what sorts of things are that? That's rage, anger, um, frustration, high energy, negative moods. Um, are, uh, it's a, it has a, different, has a different quality to low energy, negative moods. So really thinking about the sensations that might exist within those and the labels that we might apply to those helps us to be informed. And that's, and that's all this exercise is for. It might be too much detail for lots of people. Uh, but I think it's quite I think it's quite a fun one if we're thinking about being fluid and if we're reminding ourselves that that we are not we're not our emotions like we're, like we're not our thoughts we're not our emotions so and the best way to explore being more emotionally coherent in terms of managing those emotions is to engage in something called risky play so being able to, and, and Haley started off this session with, with inviting people to step out of their com comfort zone. And I certainly would at the end of the session invite you to join the conversation at the end of this um, on video, if that is something that's outside your comfort zone. Uh, because the more we expose ourselves to things that challenge us, the more we realize quite how capable we are of connecting very authentically from that place of light. So whatever risky play is for you, maybe make a list on your journal of something that you can do that's that's a challenge for you this week. Um, by the end of this week, so you've only got three more days after today uh, that will help you to expand that level of comfort with your consciousness. Uh, yeah, the labels that we place on moods can be useful. So they can be useful for expressing what's going on for us, but they also can be limiting. So 
um, anxiety, for example, becomes my anxiety. It's my anxiety that's doing this. Or we say I'm an anxious person. And part of being able to communicate emotions in terms of labels is about owning them. It is about recognizing it's a neurochemical shift within you. But it's also not allowing those emotions to become who we are. So we are so much more than that. And we only need to check back in with that mo moment where we check in with pure consciousness to recognize that the rest of the stuff is very peripheral. It's not who we are. If that, if that approach is too detailed for you, you can always take it, take it right back to something like the Beaufort scale. The Beaufort scale is a wind scale indicator. It's a 12 point scale. Uh, this is um, an image of a photograph that's actually in Sea Bay restaurant on Crantock Beach. It's, it's, it's a ladies artist illustration of what the Beaufort scale might look like looking out to sea from Crantock Beach. And basically it's how the, how the waves act and how the energy resonates in terms of a level one on the Beaufort scale might be you set light to something and the smoke rises upwards because there's very little wind. Uh, whereas whereas uh, level 12 is a class one hurricane. So you can explore energy and valence in that way because you might be a six it might look like a six where it's it looks quite stormy but it might be an energetic stormy so you might choose to scale your journaling like that you might say I'm a six today but it's a six positive uh, whereas yesterday I was an eight but it was an eight negative it was a very stormy day and and it wasn't a great experience it wasn't the invigorating version of a storm where I felt like I was in my depth it was a it was an invigorating storm that was was quite a challenge for me. And that enables you to start a conversation around being more empowered and being more fluid about how you respond to the world around you. And of course, topography, so landscape influences breaking waves. Um, and, and also we, you know, so, so recognizing the environments we place ourselves within and being at choice within that is quite a powerful thing to do. Okay, so lots of nature analogies for you to play with and get some wisdom from, don't you? Last last section, we are on 60 minutes now. I'm glad, glad Hayley said 60 to 90. Alan Watts is, yeah, I love Alan Watts. Alan Watts has got this quote, life is not the opposite of death, birth is the opposite of death and life is eternal. So we talk about life and death situations and actually what we're talking about is birth, birth and death and life is everything else and it's supposed to be messy and it's supposed to be, it's not supposed to get from A to B unscathed. That's not the purpose of, of our life. It's the space between. And recognizing that dynamic dynamic equilibriums at play so when we when we look at cliff formations for example or dune formations they're completely changing all the time there's shift there's small shifts and small changes happening all the time and life is like that yet sometimes we have this belief that life is needs to be fixed and conditioned and contained uh, or if we say to, we say i am this sort of person and it's be, it's really beautiful to hear stories of people that work with QC, for example, really transitioning out of this idea about who they are and what their limitations are and really seeing their consciousness come to the fore and then discovering more about who they're becoming. So remembering that. So self and self is a process. So in a transitional world, I've said we seek for certainty, but to imagine ourselves as fixed is really bizarre because we are made of water. We're quite literally made of water at a cellular level, something that is very fluid. So we are more than our conditioning, okay? And this is another reflection exercise. I just want you to think about something that is a historical version of yourself. And again, you don't need to share this on the chat box, but it might be something for you to consider um, because quite often we self-reference based on historical versions of ourselves. And yet we would never paddle out to sea based on yesterday's surf report. Uh, we paddle out to see based on today's surf report and based on what our senses and our consciousness is telling us in relation to connecting with the world. Um, and yet that's sometimes how we go about life. We, we imagine that yesterday's version of us is, thanks Jake, uh, is, is the same as who we are today. And yet moment to moment to moment, we are shifting. Moment to moment, we are orientating a world that's shifting and we are shifting. So what historical references or externalized versions of, of who you used to believe you are sometimes spring to mind as uh, sticky thoughts for you? And what, what are you going to do in order to separate yourself from those thoughts and recognize that those thoughts are simply that, they're historical versions. 
And the same about other people. If we think about our consciousness and it being collective, recognizing that those other people will have shifted too. So what sticky thoughts do you have around the identities of other people? And are they simply descriptions that you've come up with based on behaviors that you saw or thoughts that you had about those individuals? Because we're purely consciousness, meeting consciousness in the here and in the now. And if we only had now, if we weren't thinking in terms of timelines, thank you, Julia. If we weren't thinking in terms of this idea of I've got to get to some place, I've got to be on this journey, and yeah, you know, we're, we're just traveling from life from birth to death. I believe that we would show. I believe that we would just show up as conscious beings of compassion and connection and joyful and resonating at a frequency that encourages other people to resonate at their highest level, to vibrate at their highest level, and that's both esoterically but also from a neuroscience perspective, also thinking about the fact that our heart frequency, we talked, several of you said, when I feel connected and joy, my heart expands. And we can sense the heartbeats of other people when they're in our presence. We can sense that that sense of not being isolated and not being this self, because self as process, it's like, is it even self? Is it, is it consciousness as a process? Consciousness as an ever shifting thing. So beware habits, beware habits and patterns that we sometimes describe as being who we are because they are simply habits and patterns. And we get convinced by this hard wire, this idea of hard wiring, which is old science. You know, it's it's old, old versions of reality. They're, clearly, there are some things that are wired into us that are to do with our survival instincts, but we can change. We can change aspects of certainly in terms of our thoughts about who we are at that level at that level of consciousness within this wide continuum and yeah we are fluid and we are a verb essentially we're a verb not a noun we're not a thing we're a doing well we're doing we're a doing word and if we take it right back full circle to consciousness being something that we do being this relationship between self becomes consciousness and thought and emotions are simply peripheral indicators of how we're experiencing the world around us. So that's probably not, that's probably a little bit deep for Thursday morning, but we certainly are more than our conditioning. Certainly more than our conditioning. Okay, so a little exercise you can do, this is one for you to take away and do perhaps, is list three habits that you suspect might not be truly you. So things that you find yourself doing that actually deep down when you when you bring those into the arena of this conscious light that you connected with might not really be who you are okay list three habits that would more accurately convey this light within you so three habits and tendencies that you do partake in or you could partake in that would be you showing up as your full self and list three areas of personal growth um, that you have already achieved so this is something that we fail to do. Sometimes we fail to recognize the trajectory that we're on in terms of showing up fully. So three things that you've personally achieved where th that are part of who you are right now. And they can be big things or they can be little things. But really acknowledging and appreciating and having gratitude for the growth that you're experiencing because we are learning beings. We are we're light, but we're also we're also here to learn and adapt and evolve and enable others to show up fully. OK. And if you need more time to reflect on that, that's a big those are big questions. Certainly take more time to reflect. on it. But it, it Basically, acknowledging those insights raises your consciousness of them. So you say, yeah, I've made this progress, raises it up into your conscious awareness. It shifts the way that you think about them, which impacts the emotions that you have, which therefore creates the way that you show up in the world being very different. And therefore that that comes full circle to you being more connected and more directly engaging with the world. So I think I've put here, you know, when we connect with pure consciousness, we're aware of our collective resonance. Our new thoughts provide access to emotions that enable us to evolve our sense of who we are, why we're here and how we choose to show up. And that hopefully is with compassion, creativity and courage. So predominantly this session has been me talking at you because it's it's kind of a weird zoom world but i'm going to take i'm going to take the slides down and we're so i can see all your lovely faces and we'll have a little discussion about so what so what and now what and that might be more reflection 
you know opportunity but um but i hope that i hope that through providing some questions and providing some thought direction and also encouraging you to engage in activities such as coaching with your qc guys um, because that is a way of a way of you expanding these conversations into something that are truly useful for you um, i hope that that's that that's been a vaguely useful um hour of your hour of your consciousness for you to share with me i'm going to unshare my slides if i can work out how to do that so that i can see you here we go 